We use two new balls in one day international cricket now, and that makes people angry. But we actually always use two balls in one day international cricket because the leather won't dye white correctly like it does with red. So the leather is lighter in its natural state, but to make them bright white, the color has to be sprayed on. Because of all this, white balls start harder and swing more than the red ones. And then after five or so overs, they are softer and they stop swinging. Then they start to degrade really quickly. They also pick up dirt and grass as well. So they stop doing anything at all and you can't really see them or hit them as far. They are simply not fit for purpose. This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. Before, what would happen is that at one stage in ODI, the umpires would look at this sad gray piece of sponge in front of them and decide to replace it. Later on, they just unofficially changed it automatically around the 35th or 36th over mark with a ball that was used, but not as abused. So at the end of 2011, the ICC made a decision that still annoys many ODI fans. They abandoned the one new ball and one soil ball strategy, and they went with two new balls, which of course they had done before. Politically, this looked horrendous. India had just won the 2011 World Cup, and it would seem that the Asian teams were being targeted by this, especially because of spin. But what if I told you they weren't? In fact, it got even worse for pace bowlers after the change as well. So let's have a look at what happened in ODIs in the four years before the change, and then the four years after the change. And for all kinds of bowlers, there are just more runs now than there were before. Now, of course, there would have been anyway, because over the time, runs have been increasing for decades with or without two new balls. This is the runs per over in ODI cricket. In 2003, it was 4.54, and this year at the moment, it is 5.3. And you can see how it has grown all those years. But here you will notice that I'm not showing the year. And there is a reason for that, because I'd like you to make a guess based on this, when you think the two new balls were actually brought in. And chances are you picked this, and I think I would have as well, because I also believe that the two new balls had ruined bowlers and helped batters a lot. In fact, the biggest change on run rates comes a couple of years after the two new balls start to be used. And the actual biggest change up you can see here was also because of the balls. But this is when Kookaburra reinforced the seam and the runs per over took a massive hit. In fact, if you just look at averages, you can see that that new Kookaburra ball makes a huge difference in the last three years when it comes to the batting averages dropping. That's also in combination with the wobble ball, of course. But would we have seen this dip without the two new balls? Probably not, but certainly not to this level anyway. But the point is that people are still taking wickets with the two new balls. It did not really kill the bowlers altogether. Even in an era when T20 has changed the way we think about batting, bowlers still, to quote Jeff Goldblum, find a way. Have you ever wondered how I watch so much cricket? I use VPNs to log into accounts from all around the world. But because before, even simple things, like when something exciting would happen in a match, I would rush over to social media, and when I got there, the clips would say something along the lines of, this video is not available in your area. In fact, most of the coolest cricket stuff in the world at the moment is geo-blocked because some random board didn't sign a deal where you happen to live. If you're a hardcore cricket nerd, the only way is to have a VPN, and we suggest Surfshark. They will give you the speed of your favorite quick bowler. They're as inventive as a T20 batter after a bunch of dot balls, and they're as secure as a specialist wicket keeper with the softest hands in the world. And guess what? The kind folks at Surfshark are going to give you a deal. Enter the promo code Kimba for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals forward slash Kimba. There are probably other things that Surfshark can help you with, like data and identity theft and traceability and intrusive advertising. But for us, it is our best weapon against the evil cricket geoblock. Go to Surfshark and type my name in K-I-M-B-E-R and get three months free today. So let's just go back to the four years before and after this change. The pace bowlers put on 1.3 runs per wicket after the move. That's a decent jump, especially considering they now have a new ball at each end and they are supposed to be the ones benefiting from this. They also go at 0.28 runs per over more. So again, their benefit in all this is really hard to see for the quicks. But what about the tweakers? Well, the spinners went at 1.6 runs more per wicket. So that is 0.3 runs per wicket more than the change to pace. That's small, but it's obviously not nothing. Spinner's economy changes by 0.17 runs per over, which is actually a smaller rise than we saw happen to the quicks. And because all these numbers are a little bit different, mostly because the bowlers bowl at different periods in the game, I thought the best way to look at this was through percentages. 
And when you do, you actually see that spin raises a lot less than pace in terms of runs per over, and that both skills basically rise exactly the same amount when it comes to average. So all things being equal, spin has done better than pace with the change between balls. Yeah, I don't think I was expecting that either. But I did think maybe that was just because spinners were used less after the ball changes. And they were. Spin was bowled 0.6% less than it had been before. That is 1.8 balls in innings if you need a mass assist there. So chances are when you're watching, you're not really noticing that at all with the naked eye. But that doesn't mean there hasn't been a change because clearly it's affecting seamers, right? And the one thing that we are seeing less now in ODIs is reverse swing. And the thing that we are seeing a lot more is movement for the quick bowlers up top. In those first 10 overs, there has been a massive change. Despite the overall average going up, at the start of the innings, seamers are actually taking more wickets than ever before. You can even see it in some of the major openers of this period. These are three guys who were smashing the one white ball all around, and when it became two, their averages take a dive. It was tougher to be an opening batter in this period than it had ever been before. However, once the openers are gone and the ball gets older, it gets very dark for the quicks. Their advantage in taking wickets completely falls apart. You can notice it even between overs 10 and 20. And from then on, they are worse at taking wickets for the rest of the game. The two new balls, they do nothing. And I think the bigger difference is actually in economy, where from the 20th over onwards, they get access to hard balls and they hit them, you know, harder. Essentially before, people were trying to hit boundaries with one orange, and now they have an apple, or two apples. The harder the ball, the further you can hit it. These are the seamers with more than 400 balls in overs 30 to 50 before and after these changes. There were certainly bowlers who did better in overs 30 to 50 after the change was made, but you could see specifically that low arm bowlers like Johnson, Wahab and Malinga really struggled to take wickets. But the real difference isn't average, I think, it's economy. Bowlers who were dominating at the death before suddenly got hit everywhere. And you can see that Jimmy Anderson was 0.7 runs and over better in this period, but there are five seamers who lost more than that on the other side. And it's not just the low arm action bowlers like Johnson, Malinga and Wahab. Ishan Sharma and Tim Southey have tall actions. Shane Watson was a medium pacer. If reverse swing was one of your major skills at the end, it just disappeared and your figures felt it. And not to mention that a lot of fans also miss reverse swing. The perfect situation for ODI cricket would be that the bowlers have something like reverse at the end, but also one ball that could last all the way through the game and remain hard. But what about the spinners all the way through the matches? Well, this is a little bit weirder because you can see that several of the most prominent Asian spinners actually do better. And I don't really know what this means because I would think that Jadeja and Shakib specifically with their low arm actions would actually prefer a ball that was a little bit more soft. And when you look at the economy, it is a similar story. Most of the best spinners do really well with the two ball system. But this is a little bit incomplete because there are only two here from the West and only one wrist spinner. So we don't have as much information as I'd like from this period. But what I did want to look at was specifically Asia, because the conspiracy as it currently exists means that many people actually believe that this change was just made to slow down Asian teams. So what happened in ODIs for that region? Well, pace bowlers had the slightest rise in economy, but the average is a massive change, almost two more runs. And that might just be the lack of reverse swing not getting wickets, although it's weird that it hasn't affected the economy as much. But what have spin? Well, let's just start with the economy, because this is wild. After the ICC started with two new balls, spinners went at nearly an identical economy in those two periods when bowling in Asia. And I thought that was pretty far out. And then I looked at average. Spinners in Asia actually averaged less with the two new balls than they did with one. And I feel like I should pause here for dramatic effect. I was stunned at this. And I shouldn't have been because I have actually worked on how often spinners struggle with softer test balls from overs 40 to 80. So it makes perfect sense that they would prefer a harder ball, especially on surfaces that help them, because that would help proper tweakers who get turn because a harder ball spins quicker. Also, if people are trying to play cross batted shots because you're bowling a little bit quicker, it means the extra bounce in any top spin you put on the ball will be rewarded even more. You can see that in Asia, the harder ball is a huge help. Mm -hmm. And outside, they're holding their own, but they're certainly not dominating. So that will clearly bother teams that are spin-dependent. That doesn't change the fact that pace bowlers are worse in Asia with two new balls and spinners are better. That should actually help Asian teams who generally have better spin options available to them. But that is the complete opposite of the narrative, of course. But I think overall, the two new balls certainly helps the non-Asian teams more. But when you look at it, it is a small change. And all teams have spinners and seamers anyway. And regardless, they always had to bowl with the new and old ball. 
I would say if you had a team in 2012 that was spinner dependent, where your quicks were better with the reverse than with the new ball, it really would have been an issue. But that is now 12 years ago. And the most important thing is to remember that this change wasn't really made for the betterment of cricket or to affect one lot of teams. It was just to fix the old ball issue and get more sixes hit at the end. None of this is planned by evil geniuses. We only have the white ball because it started as a gimmick for Kerry Packers TV cricket. It remained crap because no one ever bothered to invest millions of dollars on improving it. And over the years, the situation got worse as Kookaburra took over as global white ball supplier, meaning there was no real competition pushing them at all. Everyone in cricket knows the white ball is rubbish. 40 years the game has had a chance to fix it, and the best they could come up with was adding a second ball. Now that's an elegant, yet completely lazy and cheap solution. And the biggest issue is, the chances are the ICC who made this move never actually checked or looked into what might happen when they did it. They just wanted more runs and a ball people could actually see, which is two fair things to want. But you would think that in a bat and ball sport, more people that run the game would be interested in the wood and leather aspect of it. But that is not how cricket works. And you can see one day that as people start to hit the balls even further and harder and they get softer and softer, the only answer from the ICC will be, Maybe we could add a third. 